Almost every major forecast favored Hillary Clinton to win, but shortcomings in polling, analysis, and interpretation led the public astray. Donald Trump's campaign used a London-based data analytics company to help advise on strategy. One person involved on the team was Matt Oskowski, the head of product at Cambridge Analytica. Matt, good morning. Thanks for having me. What did the Trump team know that the Clinton team did not? I think the big question going into election night was going to be turnout. And throughout this entire election, public polling and even our internal polling uh, was a bit off because I think what we expected a likely voter to be wasn't an, act an accurate representation of who a likely voter actually was in this election. How did you know what the voter was this year was not going to be what happened in 2012? I think it kind of goes back to the candidate and how he is a different style of Republican. I think most people have been reporting that he's been uh, attempting to turn out this disenfranchised vote of uh, people who maybe haven't voted in the previous few elections, uh, people who feel like uh, the system's rigged and it's been against them. And just looking at uh, the data of what makes up a Trump supporter, a Trump donor, we saw a few traits that stood out that make them a bit different, uh, a bit older, like, yeah. a bit older, a bit more male, uh, a bit more white than traditional Republican. Um, uh, a bit more rural, and I think rural is a very rural. important thing to yeah. note because of what happened yeah. last night. Uh, Your own night. firm, though, predicted on Monday that Trump had a 30 percent chance of winning. When did you see things start to change on election night? Around 8.30 central time or so, we were watching Florida very closely. We knew that Florida would be the, really the linchpin uh, on election night. We started to see a trend where rural voters were coming out at a clip even more than we thought, particularly in the panhandle. And with remaining votes left in, in West Palm Beach, Miami-Dade, and Broward County, we knew that there was a point where she physically couldn't make up the score. And once Florida was won, we felt the odds went way over 50 percent. There was a discussion of the Hispanic vote, a surge in it, however monolithic. Right. How did that impact uh, the algorithm and really right. the results that you were forecasting? Yeah, going back to what we saw in absentee and early voting, we knew that there was going to be a significant increase in Hispanic vote this year. The question was, where is that Hispanic vote going to break? Uh, and I think people sometimes think of ethnicity as binary, where if there's more Hispanic voters, clearly that will help a Secretary Clinton. But in fact, more Hispanic voters broke towards Mr. Trump in Florida uh, than I think most people expected, particularly amongst older Hispanics. We still have to flesh out the data on that, but that's what we suspect right now. There are many people that are convinced there had to be a secret Trump voter, that people are voting for Trump, Donald Trump, but they weren't telling people. Has that been your experience? Is that what you found too? We investigated this early on when a few news outlets were reporting that there was this hidden Trump vote. Mm -hmm. uh, during Brexit, they called these people shy Tories yeah. or, or people who uh, maybe not be totally honest when they're getting polled or people who actually aren't, e aren't even getting polling questions did sent to them. them. We did. At some point in the election, we found somewhere between a 1% and 3% uh, shy, hit, tr shy Trump vote or hidden Trump vote. Um, as the election got tighter and uh, fewer people uh, were undecided, we saw that margin narrow, but it, it did play into the effect on election night. You point to the debates as a turning point. How so? After the third debate, we really started to see a gradual climb for Mr. Trump towards Election Day. Uh, I think his debate performance, coupled with um, the, the FBI email investigation, was really uh, a, a big boon for the campaign. We saw numbers go to a level that we hadn't in quite some time. And uh, let, me, let me just ask you about that. Sure. How did you see that the disclosure by the FBI director, James Comey, impacted this race? It's really hard to separate out different effects um, from the data from the polling unless we specifically polled for it, which, uh, which we did not at the time. Uh, we just noticed a bump that was not natural with what we've seen in the past in this Explain election. Explain how you yeah. gather data differently than other people. I think people don't realize every time they go to the gym, mm -hmm. every time they buy a certain kind of card, your company and others is collecting that data in order to help reach them. Is that right? Sure. So there, there's three primary data sources we use, uh, one being vote history and voter data that we get from the party and others. Uh, uh, if you voted in the past, the second is commercial data, which is what you were hinting at there, uh, purchase history, demographic information, geographic information, and third is first party data from the campaign. So donors, supporters, anyone who is engaged. The combination of that with polling allows us to really be dynamic in how voters are moving. And you did that, but the Clinton team does the same thing. Was your modeling better? I think the trends that we saw late, a lot of folks didn't want to believe, particularly amongst, you know, 
about a month out from the election, we reweighted all of our polling and all of our modeling because of the trends we were seeing in ABEV that I mentioned earlier. And I think a lot of people were reluctant to do that because there was no history to back it up. And so, you know, data science is both an art and a science in politics. And I think if you apply too much art to it, you can get yourself in trouble. So we, we tended to lean towards the data. You don't think the science was wrong? No. You think the way that people were interpreting it was wrong? Yes. Congrats, Matt Auskowski. Thank you so have much. Have you met Donald Trump yet? He should be kissing you today. <laughs> I have not, but I would love to. <laughs> yeah, <that's true. laughs> right. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for being here. We appreciate it.